right, thank you. We're rolling. Hey guys, it's Carlos from Coin Vigilante. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about Bitcoin. Um, some of you guys may know me through Facebook, social media, brands, family. Um, but for those of you that don't know me, you know, I, I always talk about Bitcoin, you know, get brands, try to explain things and that. And, you know, I thought it would be a good idea um, to maybe make a video and make people aware of what's going on, what, what's going through my head and, you know, what Bitcoin really is. But before I move forward um, with this, it's going to be a short video, by the way, you know, four or five minutes. I just want to walk you guys through our website that we've been working on, Coin Vigilante. I'm going to share the screen here. All right. Good. So hopefully you guys see it. All right. So essentially, this is a, the website that we've been working on. Um, you know, we we have been updating it, as you guys can see, Cryptopedia. Um, we, we have a crypto market cap where you can look at the ranking, market capitalization of, of the coins, economy. Um, and we are writing articles, you know, such as a Bitcoin halving, you know, what's happening with certain cryptocurrencies as the market dropped in. This is something I, I worked on a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, you, you keep scrolling down, you're going to see some interesting things. Um, but let's take a look really quick. Something that I think is pretty neat. Let's look at the market caps here. And we offer this. It's on our website. If you're ever interested in looking, you can go in there and check it out. It's loading. And so, you know, maybe you guys have been on coin market cap once or twice, but essentially you can go here and look at all the, the market caps here of the cryptocurrencies that exist. Let's look at Bitcoins here. And we're gonna talk about Bitcoin. All right. So here we go. 178 billion. That's the market cap of Bitcoin. You can look at the yearly chart over here, volume as well, Te technical analysis offered by TradingView. Um, so we're working on this. Um, this is a pretty cool feature that, that our website offers. Um, and we also have a blog. And one thing I, I recommend you guys do is we're working on more things and we're gonna make this a little bit more interesting for you guys. If you guys can sign up for a newsletter, you guys are gonna get, we're not gonna spam you, right? We're not gonna send you things every day you know, blow your minds with stuff. But essentially, this is a website. We're, we're working on it. Um, it'd be nice if you guys take a look every now and then. We'll be offering some some pretty cool info. Um, also, social media. All right, we got Twitter, Facebook, and all that, so you guys can look. Um, but essentially, let me see. All right. So essentially, what's happening um, with Bitcoin? So what is Bitcoin? So first of all, Bitcoin is basically an online form of currency and a digital currency in a way. And so what happens is, is we have this electronic cash that was created by a person we don't even know or a group of people that we don't even know uh, named Satoshi Nakamoto. And so we have no idea who that person is, has stayed anonymous forever. And you know, Bitcoin was created in the wake of the financial crisis back in 2009, 2008. And it's really interesting what's happening with Bitcoin because Never in our life have we had a digital currency that is decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, and that doesn't require a single central authority to oversee transactions. And a lot of people are talking, oh, well, you know, there's a lot of people, bad people that could use it, you know, criminal activity. Criminal activity can happen with anything. All right, we have cash. You can do it, no trace. Um, you know, we can we can go over it later, but but this, this video will, will focus more on on what's Bitcoin. So, you know, when you guys look at, at banking, you know, you have um, you know, debits and credits, you have all this thing and you have ledgers where all of our transactions are kept in place. So essentially the reason why Bitcoin is transparent is because rather than have a single authority control the ledger, we have a distributed ledger network in which any person that is involved in the Bitcoin and, and using Bitcoin transactions in the Bitcoin network can see the transactions. They're all stored in the blockchain. And the blockchain actually has, you know, I think it's decades old, but we're starting to see the use cases that have come with the blockchain through Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies. And so every transaction is, is um, stored in the blockchain. And basically these transactions cannot be reversed. And, and once they happen, they happen, all right? 
And so it, it's just such an authentic network that Bitcoin offers. And so on top of the transparency, um, it's also permissionless in that it doesn't require that you go to a bank, hey, I want to send $5,000 to my uncle in, in a room, all right? So you don't have to ask for permission. And on top of that, the fees are extremely low, all right? You, you want to send cash to someone overseas, there's going to be a commission fee or of some sort. And on top of that, it's going to take three to five business days to process. So with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, um, and we'll just focus on Bitcoin, it is almost immediate, all right, the transaction. Now, it can be a little bit slow depending on how many people use the network, but there are uh, there's technology being created to, to facilitate this process. Now, to be able to have a digital currency, that can be sent peer to peer with no one in the middle to oversee the transaction is huge. It's huge. I mean, we have internet, which allows us to buy products from everywhere, but we don't have a currency yet in the internet that can allow us to do this peer to peer. And so this creates a lot of financial freedom. Um, and it's something that that's interested me. And, and on top of that, it's decentralized. No one can tamper with the monetary policy of, of Bitcoin. And this leads me to the point that it's uh, scarce. The scarcity of Bitcoin is, is crucial, all right? There will be all, only 21 million Bitcoins available ever. Currently, I think there's like 18 million or whatever. And just like, you know, the Federal Reserve prints money, what happens is, and I, I will try to not get too complicated with this, what we have is, you know, just like mining gold, Satoshi Nakamoto invented a way, and we, we call it mining, you basically can pull up a computer um, and you can start mining Bitcoin. Mining, all right? Essentially what happens to keep the Bitcoin network up and running, we have computers or nodes all over the world. And you know, depending on how powerful your computer is, you can mine more Bitcoin and work on the Bitcoin network. Now, to keep Bitcoin a cryptocurrency and that it is, um, very protected by cryptography. Um, what happens is you have these computers that are solving these insane, difficult mathematical problems. And by doing that, you are clearing transactions that are happening in the Bitcoin network. And because you're working on the Bitcoin network, having your computer solve these problems to make the network secure, you are rewarded a fraction of a fraction of Bitcoin. All right. That's what happens. That's how it gets mined. Now, every four years, what happens is it becomes even more scarce. All right, so right now, let me look here. We actually have an article about the halving. Um, oh, 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 right here. Let's see. So if we look here, the Bitcoin halving, this is, so what happens is, with the monetary policy today, and, and as we're seeing, the, the Federal Reserve is printing money like we've never seen before, all right? And what happens is, over time, we have seen that, you know, the, the purchasing power of the dollar has decreased dramatically over the years, about 95%. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics has shown through the Consumer Price Index um, that a dollar in 1913 had the same buying power as $22 today or 2010. All right, that, that's when, the, when this research was done. And, and that's about a 95% decline in the purchasing power of the dollar, okay? And, and so what happens is through the monetary policy that, that is occurring today, governments can print as much money, money as you can, therefore devaluing the purchasing power of the currency. And as you keep doing this over time, it really does crush the value of the dollar or currencies. You know, just like the yen, the peso, the dollar. Now, what happens with the Bitcoin halving is every four years, the infl inflationary rate at which Bitcoins are mined gets cut in half. So what's so interesting is right now, with all this money printing, you know, Federal Reserve, huge budget deficits that governments will never be able to pay back, we're having at this time a digital currency that is permissionless, decentralized. No one can control, no one can tamper with the monetary policy because it's in code. 
we're having the inflationary rate for Bitcoin mining half. All right. And as we see here, the last having you can print or you can you can mine 12.5 bitcoins per block, all right, per, per block that is um, worked on with uh, all the networks and all the computers that are mining. Now, with the halving, now only miners around the world will only get 6.25, and that 6.25 bitcoins is distributed between every miner out there, depending on how much output or how much work the, their network or their computers did. And so it's really interesting if you think about it, um, I think uh, it is fair to say that Bitcoin is not going to replace currencies, all right? Or any other uh, digital currency. Maybe it's not Bitcoin, the one that wins. But what's happening is we are offered today an alternative that we did not have in the past. And, you know, for years and years, central banks across the world, you know, have increased the money supply. Um, stop sharing this here. Increase the money supply, devaluing, you know, our, our purchasing power as savers. Um, you know, printing money out of everything, it's always consume, consume, consume. We can't save because if we save, we see that the purchasing power keeps decreasing, inflation keeps rising. And to be honest, you know, earnings are not keeping up with the inflation that we've been seeing. All right, so it's the first time we've ever had the opportunity ever to own a currency that cannot be controlled by anyone, really. And you know, just like gold, you know, sure. All right, gold is, gold is a great hedge against what's happening with uh, inflation or, you know, chaos around the world. But what happens? You can't just carry a bar of gold and pay over here. Now, we can with Bitcoin. Now, um, because we can do fractions of Bitcoin. You don't have to own one Bitcoin. I mean, right now is what, 9600 for Bitcoin. You can own a fraction. You can own $10 of Bitcoin. So it's pretty cool that you can do this. Um, and so... You know, basically just to wrap it up, Bitcoin is a digital asset or currency um, that can serve either as an electronic cash um, or a store uh, of value um, in which, you know, it's designed to work as a peer-to-peer -peer medium of exchange. It uses cryptography um, to secure financial uh, transactions. And so basically that's Bitcoin in a nutshell. Sure, I missed a few things here and there about Bitcoin. It, it, it gets quite complicated, you know, just like understanding money. Um, overall, it, it's it's a complicated thing to to talk about and explain. Um, and so, essentially, this is what what Bitcoin is. Um, if you guys again check out our our, our online page, CoinVigilante.com, uh, we've recently seen Facebook, um, you know, restrict what we can do with with Facebook. I mean, we were putting we we're putting um, articles online that nothing to do with anything wrong i mean we're not um breaking any guidelines any community standards and you know they told us look we're not going to let you, you know, put any articles directly from your web page um if you click coinvigilante.com on facebook it actually does not let you access the page it says that uh, you know we're you know not following the guidelines of facebook which you know it doesn't really make sense in my opinion um we've done nothing we have you know made reports and contacted Facebook, you know, look, we, we want to talk to a representative or something uh, because we are not in no way, you know, not following the rules. And so I don't know what's going on with that. I know we're not the only victim here. There's a lot of people even with, with much bigger audiences that, that have been struggling with this censor censorship that's happening, you know, all across social media. But anyway, guys, um, yeah, that was just a quick explanation of what Bitcoin is in a nutshell. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Um, we're going to keep uh, upgrading and you know, updating the website, uh, developing it even more, make it better for, for everyone uh, that wants to learn and, and keep up with our posts, information. We're going to make it really interesting, so we're going to keep working on it. Um, go ahead and you know, just follow us, like us on, on Facebook, Twitter. Um, you know, go to coinvigilante.com so you can keep uh, being updated. And again, if you want to keep up with the prices with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you guys can check us there. So. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll keep working on it and just keep uh, following us and we'll, we'll keep you updated. Thank you guys.